take a look at our web browser actions, we're going to go ahead and go to Page, Properties, and click on the Add Action button. And from the Choose a Category pull-down, we'll choose Web. Here's the actions for the web browser object. You'll notice right away that there's a few actions that we're familiar with from our other objects, such as the Get Position, Set Position, Get Size, Set Size, and so forth. Here we can set the visibility, um, set the enabled or toggle the enabled feature if you like and so forth. In addition now we've got a bunch of new actions that we haven't seen before such as back, forward, get URL, load URL, print, refresh, and stop. We'll take a look at some examples of these in the next video tutorial but for now we just want to go through and do a quick visual and uh, verbal explanation of them so for example, web back would be the equivalent of a back button in your web browser. Web forward would be the equivalent of a web forward button in your browser. So if you have a copy of Internet Explorer web browser installed on your system, you'll be familiar with the back and forward buttons that occur in that software. And these will be identical to that in terms of functionality. We've got the get URL function, and that'll get the URL from the web browser object. In addition, of course, we referred to the variable eURL that you can use to. And we've got the load URL, so that allows us to load a URL into our web browser object at runtime. We've got the print and refresh functions, and these two are, again, the same as you would get in the Internet Explorer web browser. And the same, of course, goes for the stop button. For example, if a page is loading and it's taking too long, you can press the stop button, just as you could in Internet Explorer web browser. So these are basically actions that just mimic the functionality you get in the Internet Explorer web browser. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at some examples of these actions.